so what I would like to do today is maybe try to, um, uh, to get you interested in the uh, exciting prospect of applying graph networks in high energy physics. And I'll do so by going through uh, three different work of, uh, that I've been collaborating with, um, with other people. And I link here things that I'm not covering but are relevant and, and related. Um, and I'll do this uh, by going through quickly through the physics at the LHC, collator uh, data, data representation, and that will lead me into graph networks and these three applications. Um, and you should not take from this that uh, all that we do here is with, uh, with machine learning or deep learning, but there is a branch of uh, the, 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 the researchers here that are looking into deep learning and machine learning uh, to, to, uh, to help with the data, the data volume that we'll have in, in the future. Um, so in a nutshell, what we do, uh, and probably you've have heard that many times, but we're colliding beams of protons and then with uh, the uh, constituents of the protons interacting and redistributed in, in energy at random, we have uh, new particles and known particles uh, created here, and then that allows us to uh, probe the fundamental laws of physics, physics and understand what's, what's going to happen, um, what, what, uh, what can happen uh, in the primary adult time of, uh, of the universe. So now the size of the challenge is that usually we get very uh, common stuff happening and then something that has been uh, studied to death and not really interesting. And orders of magnitudes uh, less in probability, we have uh, Higgs things and then also like other more exotic processes. So here what we have to do is observe very rare events from the deluge of, 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 of data. And uh, some of us are trying to do this with, with, uh, with deep learning, although there are other ways to, to do this. Now, quick words on data representation with a strong bias on CMS, since this is the experiment that I'm working on. But this applies to many other experiments here at CERN and actually uh, throughout the world. Um, the CMS detector, in a nutshell, I'm not going to go through the details, but here just to say that this is a very heterogeneous comp uh, detector, and uh, not computing. Um, with complex geometry and a lot of channels in the readout, just saying that if you want to try to apply deep, uh, deep learning brute force with this type of things, then there's going to be multiple problems with the complex geometry, number of channels, and, and, and heterogeneous uh, detector uh, here. So again, what I'm going to call an event, and, and trying to def define some of the objects here, we have the bunch of protons colliding, um, and some of the, uh, the constituents of the protons are interacting. Because of the density of the beams, you can have more than one proton-proton collision per bunch. And we have, uh, at the moment, 40 such pileup um, per bunch crossing. And we can go up to 200 in average, which means that there will be large tails in, in this distribution of the pileup in the horizon of 2025 and so on, uh, which means that we have um, up to 40, 200 such uh, spray of particles coming from the proton remnants. Uh, into the detector. And then you, you reconstruct essentially all the stable particles that you see there. Some of them will be in, in, uh, in colliding, uh, in spray of, um, of particles that we call jets, and I'll come back to this maybe one by one. Now, all of those particles are emanating from the origin and then traveling for the detector here against CMS as a representation. And each, in each of the detector, they leave a very specific pattern of, uh, of energy. Um, and those, those patterns are very specific per, per particle and per detector, but they have overlapping in the phase space, which means that it's not completely uh, trivial to do the identification of a hadron, for example, with a photon. There is a bit of a overlapping. Most of the core are actually easily separatable, but then there is a bit of overlapping, which goes into the challenge of particle ID. Um, and for the data reconstruction at, at, uh, for, for, for such detector, we start with the, the detector signal, complete the digi uh, digital uh, and then do local reconstruction of the energy that was deposited per piece of subdetector. And then when you have all those hits, then you reconstruct them into particle representation, tracks, uh, cluster of energies. And then we see that there is a, a, a jet and a spray, collimated spray of particles. Then you call this a jet uh, because we know that this was com coming from one initial particle. And, and some of the times this will actually come from two particles. Uh, joining in one uh, some such spray or jet, and then you have a problem in identifying what caused this initial jet. And then once you have like this type of things, then you can still uh, do high-level features, for example, the missing transverse energy that is a, sign, uh, a sign of uh, particles escaping the detector without leaving a trace, like neutrinos or very exotic particles. 
so here we have a very a large range of uh, places where to apply uh, event reconstruction or deep learning. You can do it, usually we've done it here for analysis and then we start to actually apply it way uh, deeper and then uh, never yet at the uh, raw data level, but this will come probably. Um, so now word on uh, data representation and deep learning for those who are trying to solve some of the problems of the event reconstruction analysis or deciphering what, what happened during the collision with deep learning. This has been done with, uh, in various ways and initially it was done actually with images because in some of the detectors this is really natural ways of looking at things but then um, this early work on jet imaging for example where you look at the uh, energy deposition in, in, in the calorimeter and then you try to do image-based uh, deep learning to actually decipher from whether this was a, a jet coming from a standard QCD or from a W. And then later on, there's been uh, uh, also work on sequence, uh, using sequences of, of, uh, of the particles that are compo uh, composing the jet. And this is actually working well, but there is still um, a possible loss of information in the image representation or issues with the ordering uh, although this QCD aware is very uh, fancy because it, it actually injects some uh, QCD uh, knowledge uh, for doing the ordering of the particle before doing the classification. But in general, this ordering is a bit uh, 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 difficult to, uh, to, uh, to put in place. And then uh, that's why we actually go into graph networks that are very natural representation for a lot of the data that we have uh, because then it's uh, non-ordered. You can have uh, its... Um, relational in, in the way that you can do all to all uh, if, uh, if you want or re, uh, limit the, the relations in the graph. In the graph. Uh, this was uh, initially developed uh, for social uh, media data, um, but it actually is a very natural re representation for, uh, for, for high energy physics data. And this is further, to, uh, from, the, further from image and, and, and sequence to processing. Now, there are the three things that I want to uh, talk about is, uh, are, are uh, the first thing is, is charged particle tracking. So once we have these sparse hits uh, lay, uh, laid by the, uh, the particles through the subdetectors, the name of the game is to actually connect them into the final trajectory of, of this particle. And this is a very time-consuming uh, step of the event reconstruction. Lots of processing goes into this. Um, and it's a complex process that... Um, that uh, the community has been trying to solve with deep learning. And, and after multiple experiments with image-based, sequence-based, um, we came up with, with, uh, with the graph network approach, which is not a final, a final word on this, but it's, it's a very interesting and, and natural way of looking at the problems. So now you have like, layers of detectors. You have the, the hits led by uh, the, the particles on their passage through the detector, and then you can construct a, a graph with the hits that are uh, connected, you can loosely connect them by, by geometrical consideration. For example, this one and this one are not connected because you cannot, you know, you'd like to do layer to layer co connection and then the particle cannot go just like this uh, straight up. So by doing that, this loose connection and you construct the graph. And then once you have this, then you have the inputs on the nodes of your graph. And then on the uh, edges, of, of the graph, then you have also latent representation that can be vectorial or scalar. And then you can uh, output an edge score that is uh, here, whether the edge has to be on or off. And then by doing this binary classification of the edges, and there are multiple ways of doing this on the graph, um, then you essentially reconstruct your track. Um, and we've done this in, in various ways. And then uh, here, just a, a schematic uh, um, of, of a um, sequences of edge net and node net so that we can connect layers through how the detector and then passing some of the uh, acceptance cuts that we have to apply from here to here um, due to computation issue and that's one of the uh, the remaining uh, work here that um, we need people to, uh, to actually work on this kind of things um, uh, and within, within this exact track X uh, project actually also at, at CERN there is a, an effort for this. Um, once past the those acceptance curves, the, the, the model is actually working really well uh, to find the good tracks from, from, uh, from those hits. The second uh, applications uh, is, is in pileup indication. So I remind you that uh, at, the, in, at the foreground there, at the background here, you have the image of um, taken in the CMS detector 
of one bunch crossing with multiple interactions. I think here's like a 20 to 40 multiple proton proton interaction. Each of the convergent of the tracks is one proton interaction. And the name of the game here is to actually remove all the ones that are non-interesting and then, and then select out, clean out the one that has high transverse energy and there's a characteristic of, of maybe new physics happening. So this cleanup is the pileup mitigation and this, this has been done in many ways, many um, successful ways. And what we do here is uh, construct a graph with all the particles that we see in the events and then we do a loose connection in the graph with vicinity uh, in a cone, everything that is in, a, in a, this a 0 0.3 cone uh, is, is, are connected in the graph and then once you have this graph you get a node classification, you try to do a node classification whether this is uh, belonging to the hard scatter or belonging to this addi additional proton-proton interaction happening in the event. Um, and this, this is done by passing um, information from, uh, from, from nodes to uh, nodes to nodes uh, with a gated uh, recurrent uh, unit. Um, and, then, and then essentially here, for example, the, the, uh, the latent representation of this node would be passed into the gated recurrent unit with all the neighbors and then would make the updated uh, representation. And you can do several um, step of those. And then once you have uh, to have a final classification of the, of the, the node, um, you do a, a fully connected extraction of this probability. And that which, which is represented here. So you start with particle, loosely connected, a couple of layers of a gated uh, graph network, and then the extraction with this fully connected uh, network here. Now what you end up with is uh, uh, an algorithm that is here with, that it improves the energy resolution over some of the state of the art. This is a, a, a quite representative data set, but it's not a, a CMS or, a, or Atlas data set. This is really a, a toy model there. Uh, but still, they, with respect to the, um, to the state of the art, we have a, a huge improvement in, in energy resolution here of the jets and then uh, a better classification of um, the um, particle being in the pileup or not in the pileup. And, and there, there is a significant improvement. And this is a work in publication. Now, the last, uh, uh, the last item that I want to talk about is jet identification. Once you have this spray of particles that you're observing in the detector, Maybe this is actually coming from a quark, a gluon, or whatnot. Um, and you like to actually understand what was the origin of this spray of particle. And it could be a composite object or very single objects. Um, now, to do this identification of, of, of the jet, this has been done with deep learning in, in many various ways. Um, and here, we want to apply graph network. This has been done also with, uh, by other people with message passing or particle cloud. Uh, point cloud uh, networks, but here what you pass is all the um, all the particles that you reconstruct within a spray of uh, of, uh, uh, of particles. Yes, uh, all the vertices, meaning that the, uh, the the point that you have identified as a crossing of tracks in this big interaction network that is inspired from uh, work of DeepMind to actually learn some physics uh, representation or physics interaction between objects. And then with a uh, huge machinery of the graph by, by, by passing message uh, from node to edges and edge, edges back to nodes, then you do a final classification of, of, uh, of, of the whole graph and then the jet. So this is graph level classification, binary or multi-class. Uh, 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 and then here we have a multi-class classification with a fifth class that I didn't put, but um, uh, where you can classify gluons, light quark, W boson, or Z boson, and there is a stop there that I didn't put for just uh, for space, uh, although I could have, but anyway, sorry. Um, and then the, the, what, what you have here is a benchmark against uh, uh, image-based uh, processing, uh, sequence-based processing, deep learning processes where you put all the features of your jet into, into the thing, and then the graph network, which is labeled JediNet, uh, is here in blue, and then it outperforms everything uh, on, on this, uh, this this benchmark. So very promising, uh, uh, very promising approach and application of graph network. Um, to summary, to summarize, yes, uh, uh, in perfect timing. Uh, completely amazed about how I can actually do this every single time. Um, 
so uh, the graph are very natural uh, data representation in HEP. This is not the only data representation in HEP. Uh, of course, people are, there's other many, uh, there, there's other classical ways of approaching these kind of things, but once you want to do deep learning, it looks like a very natural way of, of doing the, the data representation. Um, it does help on, on some of those tasks, and then we're looking forward to actually applying it uh, to, to more uh, other complex problems uh, to do, um, to do, to do better physics uh, out of the data that we collect at uh, CERN. Um, and if you're interested, get in touch. Uh, you have all the names of the authors of the different papers and the initial work from uh, that, uh, that all of the related works. Just get in touch with any of, of, uh, of these people if you'd like to, uh, to get involved. Thank you. Thanks very much.